Today, we are taking a look at transparency, inspection, and adaptation, and how that relates to Scrum in the real world. This is part two, so if you haven't checked out part one yet, please go ahead and click that link below, and we'll get on with the video. Right, what about the uh, sprint retrospective? Mm. So this is this is about what? This is about the team having an opportunity to inspect and adapt their teamwork, their processes, their tools, and their technology. Mm. Rather than focusing on the product, focusing on the output, they're focusing on themselves. They're yeah. turning that mirror around on themselves. So I found that a lot of teams uh, are initially quite interested in this, but then they find it a little bit frustrating. What they find is, that they're having the same conversations again and again and again, and nothing's getting done. They're doing a lot of inspecting, but they're not doing much adapting. And that's why Scrum insists that the output of every sprint retrospective is at least one process improvement. This isn't just an opportunity to air grievances. You're looking to make a real change and put that into effect in the next sprint. I find it really helps teams too to focus on what it is they should be inspecting and adapting at each opportunity. Um, and there's, I find teams rolling the review and the retrospective into one because they're so product focused, they're so delivery focused, they want to keep their customers happy. So they spend a lot of time, even in the retrospective, talking about the product when really the focus in the retrospective is way more valuable when it's focusing on the team, turning that mirror around to themselves and giving the team permission to take that time to look at how they work. It's, it should be a fun event that the team kind of look forward to. The best scrum teams I've worked with look forward to the retrospective. It's almost like a gift. It's a, a reward for having delivered customer stuff. Okay, you can now take time to inspect what you have been doing as a team, how are you working? And be honest with each other, talk about that elephant in the room, having the courage to talk about the things that perhaps teams wouldn't have the opportunity to talk about when Sorry, there's a squirrel in the room. I was looking for the elephant in the room. Um, I find with, with technical people, technical teams are made of technical people. These are guys who like doing technical stuff. They'll, they'll be working on code all day and then they'll go home and they'll learn something else they'll learn java or they'll learn python till 11 o'clock and then they'll learn code at the weekend these are people who are choosing who will choose to do this in their free time for no pay whatsoever and they get frustrated at work because there are so many organizational impediments in their way and really the sprint retrospective should be their opportunity to make work at work as much fun as what they do in their own time. There's a lot of soft skills involved. It's a skill to be able to um, identify behaviors in others and identify behaviors in yourselves and look at those objectively and impassionately and impartially. Um, and so I think you're absolutely right for techies, the development team members, those guys, those soft skills aren't what they're comfortable with. That is an alien concept. I think it's changing, but certainly for people of our generation, uh, they, there was a lot less focus on the soft skills, definitely. That was a massive generalization, obviously. <laughs> everyone's like that, but I've got this stereotypical developer in my head at the moment. So yeah, massive generalization. However, true in some cases. Um, and the sprint review. So the, the sprint review is perhaps poorly named because it's not really a review on the sprint. It's an inspect and adapt opportunity on your product backlog, on your entire plan for your product. The sprint review is your inspect and adapt opportunity on your entire plan for the product. So almost like the opposite focus to the retrospective, which is looking at the team, the reviews looking at the product. And a lot of teams find the review really scary. It's coming back to courage again. All of this inspection adaptation is talking about the courage of the team members. I find a lot of teams find the review scary because usually the customer's there. Ideally, the customer, stakeholders, all of those people are there. I wonder if perhaps the sprint review is the time where it takes the most courage for a team member to be honest, to speak up about perhaps that bad news that they would they would rather not not open this to, to discussion head on that's where that's where it's most difficult to be transparent i think or it's um, a very difficult place to be transparent 
that's not something I've thought about for a long time, but you're absolutely right. Um, this is probably one of the biggest challenges of Scrum in that the team are constantly being held to account. They're making forecasts, which stakeholders are possibly hearing as commitments. And then within a week, two weeks, or you know, up to a month, they're then being held to account on that in front of you know, end users, stakeholders, managers. And so let's talk about that transparency with customers too, because it's super important that the customers understand why we're being transparent. They're going to be given good news. They're going to be given bad news. It's just news. It's so much easier if the customers, the stakeholders, people outside the Scrum team also understand why transparency is valuable to them, why it's going to help them have a realistic view of the world. It's a super important part of the Scrum Master's role to help coach people outside the Scrum team as well, to understand that we're going to be honest with you, we're going to be transparent with you, and it's for the greater good. However, you might not like everything you hear, and that's fine. It, the value is in the openness, is in the information, the data that's going to come as a result of that. Yeah. Um, wow. That, that, that's really insightful. <clears throat> I was going to think about that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Not even being sarcastic. 